Doug, <clears throat> golly, uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what's wrong with my kids. They they don't even know how to work. <laughs> and I would go, maybe you stole that from them. Ooh. The, my last question, when, when, when you're talking about what I stumbled across this industry selfishly, I was just looking to pay the bills. I could get involved, make a paycheck was versus mortgages or versus this. But I really started to get into the meaning of the business. And that's what led me to your book in 2005, which is Misfortune 101. And I fly to your office in Salt Lake City. And I realized, I think at that point, I realized this is more than just life insurance. You are creating generational wealth. You're creating a legacy. You're... Your, 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 your steps of meaningful transformation process yeah. was, was, was shocking to me. It's also cool to see your sons, your, your, your boys, Aaron, Emran, and Scott, to see uh, us grow because you know, you're, you're actually building up the next generation. You, you talk about not equal distribution, you want equal opportunity. Right. And it's difficult for somebody with kids because they want their kids all to have more than they had, but you talk about equal opportunity. Before I let you go, can you share that one thought? What do you mean by that? Yes, uh, and as you know, I'm very passionate about this. And my goal has always been to make sure that future generations can learn from the mistakes that I've made. And that's why my story is a long learning curve. Um, I want your story to be a fast power curve. Uh, and when I watched my sons and my son-in-law begin to grasp this, and I, I didn't pay them. They didn't fall into, you know, they, they actually worked for nothing for the first couple of years and they learned by osmosis and wow. so forth. I wouldn't pay them, you know, my son <laughs> edited my book and what have you. Okay. But <clears throat> it's because, do you want me to be honest or gentle, Matt? Honest. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> when I would meet with people and they were highly successful and uh, I would often ask a question. So, how did you go from rags to riches? How did you achieve this empire? And they would begin to tell me their story about how they started out from scratch and so forth, just like I did at Kentucky Fried Chicken making a, a dollar an hour and so forth. And uh, then they were a super successful working their entire lifetime. And then, oft times, they would say, Man, I have worked so hard. Um, my kids will never have to work as hard as I did. Well, okay. And so they would come back through the years, and then when they would retire, they would often come in and um, I'd say, how's it going? And they went, Doug, <clears throat> golly, uh, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know what's wrong with my kids. They, they don't even know how to work. <laughs> and I would go, maybe you stole that from them. Ooh. As a parent, oft times we think we're helping our children by giving them everything. So when they said, my kids will never have to work as hard as I did, I'm going, well, wait a minute here. You just talked about that's what made a man out of you. So do you want to take away all of those opportunities, okay? And you start accumulating this money and then pretty soon you die because most, uh, most trusts and wills it's like as soon as you die, chunk, 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 and the, they divided it up and, and it drops in the kid's lap and some of them get this entitlement mindset. When do I get my share? Mom, dad, will you pay for it? Can I have? And that's called equal distribution. And uh, I'm going to say something here. There's nothing more unequal than the uh, equal distribution to unequals. <laughs> Let me repeat it. There's nothing more unequal than the equal distribution to unequals. So, um, as a Christian, God does not give us equal distribution of blessings, let's say of health, to all of us, regardless of how some of us may choose to abuse our bodies. Our Creator gives us equal opportunities, not equal distribution. So when I began to help people uh, set up their, their trust and their family bank under equal opportunity, then my children, my grandchildren, they have to have some skin in the game. If they'll do this, 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 they save this much. Uh, if, if they contribute, if they come up and have some skin in the game, they sacrifice, they get good grades, uh, then uh, I might match them 50 cents on the dollar or a dollar for a dollar. But it's, it's giving them a hand up 
instead of a handout. I taught this to our grandkids at grandpa's camp by giving all of the grandchildren little jars with caterpillars in them and they watched in awe as the caterpillars made their cocoon their chrysalis. A couple of weeks later they're watching uh, it begin to emerge in the measure of its full creation as a monarch butterfly and I warned them. What will they be tempted to do when they see it struggling mm. to help it out? If they do, what happens to the butterfly? It dies. So grandma and grandpa, mom and dad, we don't want you to die. So when you're struggling, deem it a privilege that God is trusting you enough to give you this challenge and don't be a clam on the bottom of the ocean just waiting around for plankton to float to you. America was built on an eagle on a flagpole, okay? That's right. I want you to respond with all your ability instead of taking the victim role. I want to give you equal opportunities and you come up with as much as you, you respond with all your ability, which is what, what the word responsibility means. And then grandma and grandpa will be there to make up the difference because I've always learned if you will be responsible and accountable and do everything you can, God will make up the difference. And that's equal opportunities for everyone instead of just, okay, I'll bail you out. And that's the equal distribution method. I'd rather leave behind in my family how to fish than just dumping a bunch of fish in their lap because then they'll be fed for a lifetime. Other than that, I don't have any strong feelings on this subject, okay? <laughs>